the idea of uh, quantum computers in a kind of in a simple way, you know, which is not entirely accurate, but you know, it's largely accurate, can be understood as follows. So basically, in a classical computer, all information is represented as sequences of zeros and ones. And in quantum computer, what you do, you replace classical uh, classical bits by quantum bits, the systems which can be in a superposition state, right, in zero and one. And the kind of what gives quantum computer is their power is that you can prepare this kind of you know large superpositions of these quantum registers, right? So you can take a quantum register and instead of processing just one input, you can process many inputs at once. This is some times called quantum parallelism, mm -hmm. right? And it gives rise to, you know, all of these kind of famous, you know, examples like Shor's algorithm and, and then things like this. But these big superpositions are actually, it turns out to be very hard to create in a lab. And the reason is somewhat fundamental. So all objects around us, like this table, for example, I mean, it's in principle made of quantum particles. In principle, in quantum mechanics, this table can be here, you know, in the next office, you know, over at MIT at the same time. But it's never the case, right? Because these large superpositions, they they never exist in reality. They all is effectively, you know, described. These large objects are described by laws of classical mechanics. So, to build a quantum computer, what you need to do, you need to make a large superposition of all of these qubits, you know, and by large. You could say, for example, you know, thousands of, of qubits. Um, and this is something which does not occur in nature, you know. So the mere idea whether such a large superposition can ever be built is not, you know, it, it has never been done. So it's a very important fundamental question. Is there a physical limit to how large the superposition can be in neutral atom arrays? we do not know the answer to this question so, so i mean we do not know the answer to in any system to this question mm -hmm. you know but you know in neutral atom arrays we can create now probably by some accounts the largest superposition ever <laughs> created and that's why i mean this is why it's both fundamental and kind of applied you know this doing that has a fundamental aspect but it also has the real world applications like you're describing because these states don't exist in nature yeah. like these large superposition states they're very unstable and very that's hard to basic. produce right and that's what everybody's struggling yeah. whatever system they're using so if you look at transistors yeah one of the big drivers of the success of transistors is that exactly. they were able to create the pn junction exactly which maintains a very interesting situation exactly. at the you know microscopic level exactly. passively the pn exactly. junction is passive so it exactly. would be something because like, it has non-linearity you exactly. know right it's and yeah it doesn't there's a basically just the material that's just the doping of the material gives you those properties so you don't have to exactly. for example externally force them yeah. the question is is there a trick like this that has been discovered yet in quantum computing or is that yet to come so has anybody found a hack yeah. the way that like the pn junction is so, something like a like a trick so we are finding this hack as we speak you know so and okay okay so basically to kind of answer this question kind of let's you know given that we understand the challenge right you know it's kind of useful to go back to mid 90s you know where we you know we are now still you know and uh, you know what happened at the time was that you know there was some early excitement about quantum uh, computers that you know people showed that quantum computers can potentially for example simulate physical systems much better much faster than classical computers can do it was the early work by richard Feynman, and then there was also an important contribution by seth lloyd at mit uh, and then uh, there was a work by Peter Shor, who showed that, you know, quantum computers can solve an important practical problem, factoring, faster than any classical computer, at least no, any known algorithm in a classical algorithm can do. But at the same time, during this time, like, you know, mid to late 90s, there was also very wide skepticism whether quantum computers can be built, ever. And the reason is precisely because large quantum objects, you know, can just not be created. And one specific uh, issue there uh, is connected to error rates in quantum operations. So going back to like what I already discussed, in some way, quantum computer 
can be viewed as a kind of version of an atomic clock. And atomic clocks, as we discussed, are very precise. Atomic clock, you know, can basically you know keep the 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 time or keep the kind of a phase, you know, fixed to like one to the you know better than power to ten to the nineteen, you know, basically. It's a it's an extremely precise, you know, system. But the problem is that in a quantum computer, what you need to do, you basically need to start with, you know, qubits, which you can think about as atomic clocks. But then this, you know, you need to start doing operations on these qubits. You need to basically start doing quantum logic. And, you know, this quantum logic has to be also extremely precise. So, for example, to, you know, to, uh, to execute useful algorithm at scale, people believe that you need error rates you know, something like one to the ten to the nine, or something one one in a billion or better. Are, yeah. Sorry, I just have a question. So, yeah. in a in in clocks, are they actually typically using a single atom, or does it present additional difficulties to so, go down from a group of atoms to a single well, atom? So, the, you in in clocks, they typically the modern clocks typically use many atoms, but these atoms are not talking to each other. They are completely, they are completely independent. So you can view a them as like just a many copies of a single atom, right? And so long as these atoms are isolated, you know, then you can. That's what enables, for example, a new generation of optical atomic clocks. You know. So by the way, you guys might want to someday interview Junier, who is actually oh, would be amazing. You know, yeah. he will be here in February actually yes. for for a week. So, uh, but you know, but but like, but the problem is if you want to build quantum computer. You really need to, you know, make these atoms talk to each other to execute quantum logic, and this logic, quantum logic, should be extremely precise. Not, not to the one to the, power, not to the one in part to the ten to nineteen, but you know, one to the part of, uh, to the power nine, right? So, and that is actually like way beyond, you know, one could possibly ever possibly imagine doing. Uh, uh, kind of at a physical level, precisely because, in contrast to uh, uh, classical like PN junctions, where you have nonlinearity, which can keep you sort of stable to it a very high degree, in quantum mechanics, you know, all evolution is fundamentally analog evolution, right? And this kind of for analog evolution. Unless you just let the atoms process freely, you know, it's very hard to actually, you know, you know, keep it to this kind of accuracy. And so for this reason, in the late 90s, there was a widespread criticism and actually led by some very famous people in the field, like for example, Serge Harosh, who got a Nobel Prize in uh, like, you know, a few years ago. And uh, uh, who really, you know, wrote papers showing that, you know, quantum computers, they call it um, theory's dream by the experimentalist nightmare. And um, and it, will, it should be pointed out that Serge is, you know, someone who actually at the time built largest entangled state. So basically by doing quantum operations, you know, this kind of the super, with massive superpositions, they are called entangled states, you know. 